Welcome back to the Michigan versus Michigan State pregame show on CBS 62. He led the Spartans to the national championship under Tom Izzo in 2000 and was named most outstanding player of the Final Four. He talks about the rivalry and how the Fab Five had a profound influence on the 2000 champs. Tony Ortiz has more. Guys, as you heard earlier in the show, there's a saying on a plaque at the Breslin Center that players play and tough players win. Well, no one epitomized that more than Mateen Cleaves did. In fact, especially in this rivalry, he was rock solid. He won his last five matchups against the Wolverines as a member of the Spartans, and that's one of the major reasons why Mateen Cleaves is such a hero around Michigan State and around East Lansing. What makes the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry such an intense one? I mean, it's simple. They don't like us, and uh, we don't like them. To be honest, I didn't understand what the rivalry was all about. Even growing up in Flint, Michigan, and seeing it as a kid, I didn't know the dislike for each school until I actually played in the game my freshman year. Think about this, the impact the Fab Five had on Michigan was the impact your group had on Michigan State. You changed that culture around there to the point where it became a cool school. Suddenly Michigan State was seen in a different light, almost like what the Fab Five did for Michigan. Yeah, we were, and to be honest, we took a page from the Fab Five. You know, credit in, in Jalen Rose and Chris Weber are you know, two guys I look up to, mm -hmm. but we, we saw the swagger that they brought. We were influenced by the Fab Five, honestly. I, I know some of my Spartans don't want me to say that, <laughs> but I, I gotta be honest, we were influenced by them. Number 12, Matching please. Does it feel like 15 years since you've won an NCAA title? Ah, oh, man, it, it really don't. It really don't. Um, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it does. When I'm <laughs> stiff, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> when I look back on it, it just seemed like yesterday. He hurt himself. He, he, did. Did. he oh, really man. hurt himself. And he's dragging himself to the bench. To be able to achieve the things that we achieved, um, accomplished together as a family, uh, makes it all worth it. And it just warms my heart every time I think about it. When he gets back out here, this arena is going to go wild. When you see this picture, we were just talking about that, what comes to your mind? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, man. You try to make me cry, I'm man. not trying to make you crying in the picture. I was but crying in the picture, man. <laughs> this picture right here says a lot. With Coach Izzo, with his arm around me, I got the championship net around my neck. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about everything that we went through from the day he started recruiting me until the horn went off at that game. And I tell people, I cried, and it, it just, the feeling, it felt like I was levitating. I never cried and the tears felt good. That was the first time in my life that I cried and the tears actually felt good. We played not only with a chip on our shoulder, but we did have that swagger. We did expect to win. We had that, we knew the tradition mm -hmm. and what it meant to wear a Michigan State jersey with the great players that have come through there. Magic Johnson from Scott Skiles to Steve Smith, the great players that are uh, Johnny Green and all the greats that have come through Michigan State. It was our time to carry the torch and we took pride in that. One of the greatest leaders the game of college basketball has ever seen. We all know it's the students and the athletes that make the rivalries what they are, each side disliking the other. But when the trash talking stops, the game has been won, we all get back to life, where oftentimes we find those in need. Our Tom Jordan reports on a group of Michigan students that are making a difference one drive of the nail at a time. College life is a busy life, so why not throw another project into the schedule, like building a house? But well, that sounds pretty good to a number of University of Michigan college students. After all, they figure their need for a home is out there, and they couldn't be more correct. Mission statement for Habitat for Humanity is to uh, provide simple, decent, and affordable housing to lower income families. Well, I come out here because I uh, just really feel like being on campus all the time is not really doing a lot for me. I need to get out and do something for the community. Almost all of our homeowners are first time home buyers. They've never owned a home. They have to do 250 hours of sweat equity, uh, which means sweat equity is come in and work on their own house. This program means everything to me. It's given hope where there wasn't much hope to begin with, and I'm very grateful for everything and all of the students that come out. 
making a difference in people's lives. It's about right on this side, okay. side. I think this side would be good. These students are the most amazing people in the whole world. They're going to one of the hardest colleges. They have tons of homework and studying and school. Why all their friends are sleeping in on Saturday morning, they're getting up early to come and work on a house, which they get nothing for other than the satisfaction of knowing that they're doing something great for, for a beautiful family who really uh, deserves it. I definitely feel like through this process I need to pay it forward. People have done a lot for me, people I don't know. I've made a lot of great friends. Over the years, uh, not only have I like, learned how to uh, paint a ceiling and uh, put on siding and insulation, I've also learned that uh, Gratitude is amazing. And it doesn't matter if you're blue or green, it's just as long as you want to uh, be part of the Habitat family. Really nice to see these college students making a difference for people in need. I'm Tom Jordan, WWJ News Radio 950. Thanks, Tom. Okay, Jamie, it's the time we've all been waiting for. Who do you think wins today's game? I'm sure it's the time everybody's been waiting for, yeah. <laughs> Uh, look, I think Michigan State's a little bit better right now. They're just better in every facet of the game. I find it amazing that Michigan is struggling offensively under, under John Beeline, but that's just where they are. Home court, Breslin Center, a lot of emotion. I think it's a big game for both teams, but I'm taking Michigan State to win 63-58. Well, I agree with you. I think the Spartans do get the win today. I think they pressure Michigan's young backcourt and a banged-up Derek Walton could make a difference. Nobody really respects Michigan's bigs just yet to pay too much attention to them defensively. Unless Zach Irvin shoots lights out from the perimeter, right. I think the Spartans get the win today, 70 to 61. Well, that about wraps up today's Michigan Michigan State pregame show here on CBS 62. But before we leave, let's check in with first forecast Karen Carter for a look at today's game day forecast. Thanks, Doug and Jamie. Well, it's still going to be cold throughout the afternoon. We may still see a little bit of sun, but after the game, expect temperatures to be in the low 20s and dropping into the teens overnight. Clouds will increase with a chance of snow this evening and overnight, and we could even see some of it stick. Join me again tonight after 48 hours. Back to you guys. Thanks, Karen. Up next here on CBS 62, the Michigan Wolverines battle the Michigan State Spartans live from East Lansing. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the game and go blue or go green.